To access the program, click on the Start menu. In All Programs, look for the folder II Unam and then select Crisis 2007, which will open a window with the version of the program. Click OK. When the program is open, we then load the files for the area of study and the specific sites located in that area. To open the data entry window, there are two options. The first is from the input menu, selecting Maps, and the second is from the toolbar, clicking on the Map Data icon. To load the file containing the polygon for the area of study, double-click on the first blank text bar. This will open a search window. By default, the program shows all files with the .shp extension. Select the shape containing the polygon and click Open. Now select the second blank text bar and look for the Sites file. Change the search extension to .asc and select the file indicated. Click Open. When the files have loaded, click Exit. Next, we define the sites where the computation will be made, which can be accessed in two ways, either from the Input menu, selecting Grid of Sites, or from the Toolbar, selecting Data of Computation Sites. The window shown is divided into four sections. In the first, enter the title of the run, in this case, Capra Island. The second is for the definition of the points where the seismic hazard analysis will be performed. This data can be entered in two ways, by manually defining the limits of the polygons of the areas of study, or by loading a list of sites. To define the limits manually, Write the origin of the grid in degrees, the increments, and the number of lines in the two directions, longitude and latitude. The third section is the visualization screen. In the fourth section, the grid is reduced to the area of the points of interest. To define the grid reduction polygon, select Start Polygon and draw in counterclockwise order. When you have finished, click End Polygon and then click Exit. Now we add the defined seismic sources. Crisis 2007 has two options for opening the data entry window, either from the input menu, clicking on Source Geometry, or from the toolbar, selecting the Source Geometry data icon. The program makes it possible to add geometric data manually or by importing a shape. The first option is by indicating the polygons to be studied. First, rename as Source A the polygon appearing by default named Source 0. Then place the mouse on the gray square and right-click to insert the coordinates of the vertices forming the polygon. When the coordinates of the vertices of Source A have been added, select the area of the Rupture Area parameters for each source. 
Click the Choose button and select Brown. The Source is Alive option is activated in the same way. This procedure is the same to add all sources defined in this tutorial from A to F and coordinates of the vertices of each. To visualize the sources entered in the Sources to Draw section, activate the Selection option, which will open a window indicating the sources that were loaded. If you want to visualize several sources at the same time, click the box to the right of their name and the word OK will automatically appear. Click Exit and in the image you will be able to see the sources selected. If you want to enter the sources by importing an SHP file, click Import SHP which will open a window. Click on the blank bar and look for the .shp file to be loaded. Click Open. When the polygons to be evaluated appear, click Import. When the file has loaded, Go to the Sources to Draw section and activate the Selection button, which will open a window indicating the sources that were loaded. To visualize several sources at the same time, select the box to the right of its name and OK will automatically appear. Click Exit and you will see the sources selected in the image. Again, click Exit. The seismicity characteristics may be entered in two ways to the sources loaded. On the input menu, select the Source Seismicity option, or by selecting the Seismicity data icon on the toolbar. At the top of the open window, the source name and source number can be seen. The program includes two types of occurrence models, the Poisson model and the characteristic earthquake model. Depending on the model selected, the program activates the cells for the required information. Now enter the requested model information. This is for each source added. Then click Exit. There are two options for opening the window required to enter the spectral ordinance. By selecting Spectral Ordinance on the input menu, or by clicking Data on Spectral Ordinance on the toolbar. In the first box, enter the number of ordinance. In the second box, indicate the actual spectral ordinate. In the next box, its structural period. Also, then add the lower limit and upper limit of intensity levels and their units. Finally, indicate the number of intensity levels for which seismic hazard will be computed. This procedure is the same for the number of spectral ordnance to be added. Then, click Exit. To enter the attenuation data, there are two options for opening the data entry window. On the input menu, by selecting attenuation data, or by clicking on the attenuation data icon. To enter attenuation data defined by the user, click Add User Model and look for the file required. When you have selected it, click Open and the attenuation data will automatically load. If you want to open attenuation data that has been defined by Crisis, Select Add Built-in Model. When this window is open, select the corresponding attenuation data. For this exercise, we have selected the data of Young's et al., 1997. In the Fault Location section, activate the Interest Lab option. In the Soil Type section, select the Rock option. Then assign a name and click Select. To assign the attenuation data to each source, on the window to the left, change the active window to the Source for Model Assignment tab 
and on the window to the right, change the active window to the General Model tab. In the latter, select the attenuation data defined for each active source. In this case, source A. This procedure is the same for each source. When the attenuation data has been assigned for all sources, click Exit. The global parameters for the seismic computation can be accessed in two ways. On the input menu, by selecting global parameters, or by selecting the global parameters icon. Enter the corresponding values in the integration parameters section, as well as the return periods defined for this exercise. The distance for disaggregation is kept as focal. Then, click Exit. When all data needed to perform the computation have been loaded, this information is reviewed by selecting on the input menu Summary of Data or by selecting the Summary of Data icon on the toolbar. The window shows the source name and source number, the corresponding seismicity data, the coordinates of the source, and its visualization. When the data have been checked and found to be correct, click Exit. To define the results files to be obtained, access the Input menu and select the Set Output Files. In the window that appears, activate the Set Output Files required. For this case, we have selected all options. Then, click Exit. To begin the seismic hazard computation, select the Run menu and click the option Validate and Run. The window that opens indicates whether there is any error. If there is none, save the file with the same name. Click Run to begin the computation. When the program has completed the computation, a window opens that shows the file with the data entered, as well as the output files previously selected. Then, click Exit. There are two ways to access the visualization of the seismic hazard maps obtained. On the Hazard menu, by selecting See Hazard Maps, or by selecting the See Hazard Maps icon. This window shows the distribution of sources, the grid of sites for computation, and the vibration period of a given intensity. To obtain a hazard map for a specific return period, on the drawdown menu of intensity, select a zero seconds vibration period if the soil acceleration or the intensity of interest are required. In the text box, return period, enter the desired return period. In this case, we selected a 200 year return period. When this has been done, click on Draw Map with selected options to visualize the data obtained. The desired data, grid, map, sources, or cities can be activated or deactivated using the Draw Options option. If you wish to visualize the hazard map associated with a vibration period, in the Intensity option, select the desired period and click Draw Map with selected options. In this case, select a 0.5 vibration period. The program automatically activates the Maps for Fixed Return Period option. Therefore, if it is wished to obtain the hazard map for a specific acceleration, the Map for Fixed Intensity option should be selected. 
With this option, the return period option is blocked and the fixed intensity option is activated. In this box, enter the acceleration for which you wish to visualize the map, in this case, 600 galls. When the changes have been made, click on the Draw Map with Selected Options icon. To save the maps obtained, select the Save Maps in Different Formats icon. In the window, select the format in which you want to save the map and double-click the blank text bar to assign the destination folder and the name of the file. To visualize the exceedance rates and uniform hazard spectra, check that the Maps for Fixed Return Period is active and just select the city you wish to know them for and a window showing the desired information will automatically appear. If you want to have information for an undefined point, Click on the site of interest and it will automatically show the information. To save the results shown, click Save, enter the name of the file, and click Save. To close the window, click Close. If you need to generate an AME file to compute hazard with Copra tools, click on the Copra icon. The Crisis 2007 program makes it possible to generate AME files for earthquakes and tsunami. How to obtain an earthquake.ame file? The window has two tabs, Multiple Scenarios and Simple Scenarios. If you need to generate a parametric data file, in the Multiple Scenarios window, click on Earthquake parametric AME. The lowest magnitude previously entered was 4. In this case, the number of scenarios to be generated is 6 magnitudes, so that the minimum is considered to be 5 and the size of the subsource will be 30 kilometers. The program automatically assigns a name and path to the file to be generated, which can be changed if desired. To begin the computation, Click Compute. After it has been clicked, a window will appear in which can be visualized all metadata associated with the .ame file to be generated. If everything is correct, click Accept. When the file has been generated, Click Accept and then OK. To generate an AME file defined for a tsunami hazard, click the Tsunami option. A box will automatically appear with the information required to generate the AME file. Then double-click on the first blank text box and look for the Points file with the .tsu extension. Then click Open. Then double-click on the second bar and look for the file containing the topography data for the site of interest. Then again click Open. Then double-click on the last bar and look for the file containing the bathymetry for the site of interest. Click Open. Check that the Only SHP option is active, so that account is taken only of those events whose epicenter is located at C and make sure 11 appears in the NPPS section. The program automatically assigns a name and path to the file to be generated. To begin the computation, select the Compute button. When this is done, a window will appear with the visualization of the metadata associated with the AME file to be generated. If everything is correct, click Accept. When the file has been generated, Click the Accept button, then click OK. At the bottom of the window, Successful Scenario Generation will appear.